What is going on managers and welcome to something a little bit different and special for me Something I've been looking to do in a long time and it's about time we put our time into it and get you this series going It is making football managers in real life and getting their tactics into Football Manager 2023. And this is what we're going to be doing with this right now. So I have picked none other than Eddie Howe. He's at Newcastle. He's revolutionized the Newcastle side and made them one of the most informed premiership sides out there right now. So how has he done it? And what's he changed that's made them go into this unstoppable force? Well, I think I've cracked the tactic, and I think I've made an absolute belter. So let's get straight into it, and let me show you how he is dominating the Premiership. So I've kind of recreated what Eddie Howe has done with Newcastle. Obviously, no signings with this team or anything like that. I've just gone with what we've got. We started with six games in. As you can see, we are second in the league, kind of imitating the same amount of form that Newcastle or IRL as well. So... We're going to get into it and show you what is actually happening. Because you've got to remember how Newcastle were, were with Steve Bruce. They were playing that five at the back. It was defensive. It was sit back. It was just let all the attack just flow on. And kind of Eddie Howe just revitalized that, changed it completely, introduced a whole new system of football that he plays. And this is what I have gone with with this tactic. And as you can see, it's kind of a 4-3-3. As you look up there, and first and foremost, we're going to pick up on St. Maximin and Al Almiron as playing as strikers. You're going to look at me and go, whoa, 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 they aren't really strikers. But no, they don't. As you can see on the instructions, we got them to sit wider, both of them, Almiron and St. Maximin, both sit wider. So they don't actually become strikers, they become wingers, but they drop back just here, especially on this DLF. They drop back and become into this this area here, kind of like as a Mazzola would here, but they all it's like a, Maz a striker Mazzola. They operate in this semicircle here, so it's really good for them to do that because they drop back and really get involved in the game. And we know that Eddie Howe really encourages these two guys to run with the ball. They are the most prolific dribblers of the ball what I, in the premiership nearly so they really instigate dribbling with the ball that's why we got dribble more on with these guys they are there to put the ball get the ball run at defenders break them down and then then isaac could be in there or callum wilson who he's been using at the minute because it's not been getting that much game time but isaac is as a center forward and he has the hold up, hold up as well for the ball so he gets that ball he can dribble more and take more risks and run for the position there. But he is kind of get the ball. I wouldn't say a target man, but he is someone to aim at. Because we know as well that with this style of football that Newcastle play, it's get the ball and get it forward and try and cut them runs in. You'll see St. Maximum making runs in. You'll see Isaac making the runs. It's a diagonal run as well, trying to get through. And this is what these are here for. And then we go into the midfield here. Joel Linton is a ball-winning midfielder. He has been converted. What Eddie Howe has done to convert Joel Linton from that shamble striker that he had, them seasons he had as a striker, he just wasn't doing anything. He wasn't getting the ball. His first touches was awful. He wasn't holding up the play or anything like that. He wasn't scoring goals neither. That was a big thing. He wasn't scoring goals. To convert him into a midfielder and a ball-winning midfielder at that as well. He's been absolutely brilliant, and really, he's been doing very, very well for us, especially in this position as well for the first month that we've played with this tactic. Then we have the one of the big signings that they had this year, Bruno, and he has been absolutely unbelievable. They've got him as a deep-line playmaker, but I'm playing him as a roaming playmaker. He helps out with the attack and also helps out with defensive, so he kind of breaks off from that position. You've got Joel Linton kind of covering here as well. He is on support, so he does run up here. He kind of gets the ball wherever he needs to do. And that's what Eddie Howe kind of did with Newcastle. What he did is he, he stopped this drop back that we were on about with Steve Bruce. And he pushes up now. He gets the boys up there, getting the ball back off them as soon as possible and try and put them under a little bit of pressure. That was not part of the team that Steve Bruce had. He was inviting pressure on where Eddie Howe likes a bit more fight in his players, get the ball off and put pressure on him and get the ball into the box as quickly as possible. So there is a form of like counter-attacking football that they play, but it's not really 
as bad or as worse as Steve Bruce's was because that was real bad football that they were playing. Then we have in the right hand side is Joe Willock who's on attack so he bombs forward try and get the ball through try and instigate something here for these and that allows him to push forward and if Bruno does have the ball he can look for this run and just creates a a kind of a link to the strikers and the midfielders there getting Willett going forward so he's just a, a chain link on connecting these two together and he's a very good one at that as well does get himself in the box does throw himself around a bit he has had an injury though unfortunately so we've been playing Sean Longstaff there as well who's done a good enough job but he's not quite Joe Willett level in my eyes so we have seen a bit of difference in in quality there when we have to bring Shaw Longstaff on compared to Willick but that's just a minor thing there one of the massive things as well I know we're on about transfers one of the massive ones that has happened with this club is the two fullbacks they have brought in and they have been absolutely brilliant Kieran Trippier England capped international won the La Liga with Atletico Madrid and he's just influential. His free kick taking has been unbelievable. And it's one of the big things that you'll see from Newcastle. As Newcastle have really getting most of their goals from set pieces. And Keevan Trippier is the main, main distributor of the free kicks. He takes corners. He takes free kicks direct and non-direct. He is there to put the ball into the box. And he is so capable of doing it. And when you've got big plays in there as well getting forward. Especially the likes of Dan Bourne who is six foot seven, he is going to be getting them balls and winning the edit. So it's another instrumental one there with LaSalle's also in there, 6'2", who's a big guy that can throw himself around. They've got big targets to aim for there and that's absolutely crucial, especially with Trippier's delivery. And also, they have Matthew Targets who they got from Aston Villa, another great player who can really get forward and join in with this play. That's why we, we don't use these wingers. We can afford to push as I said there, you can afford to push these as DLFs because they drop into this position so the fullbacks and wingbacks can get forward and start implementing the wide side that doesn't leave us vulnerable when we're coming back as well, especially with Joel Linton pushing along this side here, getting the ball. Obviously, you've got the roaming playmaker and Bruno who will track back as well. I know he's not ideal to put the tackle in, but well, he's got 14 tackling actually and he's got 15 work rate, so he is ideal actually. I, excuse my... Uh, excuse my no knowledge there, but he is absolutely brilliant at doing that. So that allows us to let the fullbacks go forward. I know they're only on support, but it lets them go forward and push it up as well. Then we have obviously Burn and LaSalle's. We don't have them on like ball playing defenders or anything like that. We just want to as normal, generic center off, get the ball out, clear it up. If anything happens, try and find that ball through or anything like that. Simple football from the center offs. Let the creative players in midfield and up front and the wingers or the wing backs get that creativeness there and that's what really happens here we're not really playing on balance uh, on attacking or defensive we're just sticking with balance and i, I kind of like judge how i'm playing the games whether i need to go attacking or defensive or anything like that i let that flow with it but the balance play with this newcastle side is absolutely brilliant because nothing crazy goes on they do as they say it's like ron seal it does exactly what it says on the tin and that's what they're doing here and it's brilliant to see and i love that about it so all i have with them is play out of defense and what that is is that's getting it to the wing backs defense not through the center or something from that we have it through the wing back so we play out to defense we have a slightly higher tempo but the standard of passing is generic it's standard we don't go short we don't go long we're just standard we let the players decide what is the right option there so we have to give them options to say yep yeah, that's right we're going to get the ball forward and simple as that they go long or they go short it's up to them we do also play fairly wide and what that does as well as allows saint maximin and almiron to push wider yet again even though they got to stay wider the fairly wider on the attacking width allows them to push wider as well and they do become high wingers they're just very attacking high wingers as well so that's all we do when we are in possession of the ball when we are in transition it's pretty much counter press and counter that's all i needed to do like i said with eddie how he wants to get that ball back as soon as possible and get that ball whipped in so we counter and as soon as we get the ball back we counter him, and then as soon as we've lost the ball, we counter press to get that ball high press, get it back as soon as possible. Boom, off we go. We try and score a goal. Simple as that. So, with that, we do have a bit of a high line. It's a high press and a high defensive line. It's not an extremely high one. We're just a little bit higher. We kind of eliminated, like I said, the Steve Bruce kind of low block that we didn't want there. We've introduced a higher 
defensive line of press and then the high line of defensive line as well so it just stops anything up in there we have got the plays on stuck in we do like to have them have a tackle i feel like that is kind of the eddie our way tackle in hard win the ball back off you go keep going at them that's in my eyes something that they really do and they do really well and then we've just stepped up a little bit more getting that high press a little bit further just with the step up we don't drop off we don't invite the pressure on we don't like inviting the pressure on that's not how eddie Al plays he wants to be the one putting the pressure on not absorbing the pressure and that is how it pretty much works with us and he's really worked really well and it's just stopping kind of you will see in the results the bigger teams do get goals against us i'm not going to lie about that purely because of this high line we are easier to break down by some very good players but with the lesser sides we really start scoring some good goals there with them so that is how the tactic runs. Also, one thing as well is we do have dribble more with Willick. So if he gets the ball deep, he can run with it. And that's pretty much all we have to do there. Tackle order on Joel Linton as well. Pretty much simple as that. That is how we have set up. That's how we're going to run with it. And let me just show you the results that we have had because we've had some crackers. The scheduling preseason was absolutely brilliant. Uh, got a nil-nil against Bayern, which I thought was very steady considering exactly who who by and all what we are but the the manchester city 4-0 was unbelievable as it came to almiron and kieran trippier getting one as well brentford we beat 2-1 we did get penalty which got us the win but we still did well Notts forest we won 3-1 we did lose against spurs but it was a 95th minute winner it was unfortunate for us we scored in the 92nd as well but unfortunately we couldn't get over the line and harry kane does harry kane things and scores a goal we got a four a 4-3 win over Manchester United. We got a 97th minute penalty. As you can see here, I thought we were going to lose it. I honestly did. As soon as I saw Anthony score and then Martinez scored in the 94th, I goes, there's no way we just drew that. And then we get a penalty in the 97th minute and gets us a winner there, which is a huge result. I would have took the draw. A 3-3 against Manchester United as well. But once again, in the late stages of the game, I think we're just pressing a little bit too much and I need to make more substitutions because the press is just a little bit too much and it's tiring our players out and that's costing us as well uh we got a 3-1 against nottingham forest which is a good result and then a 2-0 against pally so i'm going to show you some of the goals right now and just show you just exactly how we are getting through and why this why this tactic is working in my eyes so let's have a look at some of the highlights and i'll show you just how we are going so one of the things that i was saying as soon as we lose the ball we try to get it back as joe willett gets the ball then plays that quick ball through finding isaac who is making them diagonal runs or behind the back of the line runs exactly how eddie i wants it wins the ball straight away pushes forward and gets it through another one is going to be a set piece looking for that ball yet again isaac just takes it around the goalkeeper a nice slot away great ball from joel linton as well playing in that ball winning player as we get the ball again it's a hoof up a little bit of a miscommunication there but that one okay we're gonna say we put the pressure on him akanji makes a mistake there and almiron capitalized on it but that high press you wouldn't have got that with steve bruce akanji would have been able to set himself back up and get the ball and kieran trippier with an unbelievable finish there finds us a goal and that's just what i mean with that set piece he's been absolutely brilliant it was a great result for us as you can see 21 shots nine on target yeah manchester city like i said the better sides are gonna have more chances against us because they are better and they can really break down this team but i think we did phenomenally well there so our goal from spurs comes from bon getting it out there can you see how wide i was mentioning with callum wilson look where he's playing it's an unbelievable out wide there finds a great ball finding isaac getting that ball forward and it just slots it away it's a great finish from isaac as well but callum wilson playing really out on the wing there and I'm just showing you just exactly what we do and how we're not really playing three strikers we're playing they're really outside on the wing so it's not like we're playing three strikers up top there so once again from us we have brilliant build-up play look how much room we've got now with these players bruno there getting it on the ball finding willick what does willick do we've got him dribbling more so he pushes forward he dribbles forward gets away with it almiron out there out on the wing on the right hand side yet again gonna push into the box try and find isaac which he does and isaac with a lovely finish there just slots it away nice work from him and brilliant play we worry about that high press try and get the ball back for that second and we really do there as we try and push around not letting us get pushed over by the players here as wilson picks up the ball out wide yet again pass it to bruno who is roaming around getting involved in that match every single way he can 
and we try and move this ball forward. It's a great play from us as well. We do really well to just spread the ball around, and that's where that wideness comes from that we play fairly wide. As Target gets the ball, who we know can distribute the ball well, get the ball into the box and put a bit of danger on. Look how far forward he is, but it's all right because we have the likes of Longstaff here who's got a ball-winning midfielder that can push back if he needs to as Joel Linton pushes into the box. And you don't see that off Joel Linton every time, do you? What a finish that is from him. Brilliant play and a great goal. Once again, this is probably the one thing where we have been lacking, really, as Manchester United bring this ball forward. You can see here a little bit of sixes and sevens all over the place. Kind of too far split. I'm not sure why Dan Bourne is pushing up that far when the rest of the line is a little bit back. So we could have a look at that. Probably mark tighter or something like that to try and drop it back or just drop from higher to just a little bit shorter but that's just one of them things that happens there as Casemiro as he has three players surrounding him try and win that ball back all just piling on him putting the pressure on and St. Maximin did as Almiron gets that ball through lovely ball as well finding St. Maximin linking up together and he just slots it away for a great finish can't even fault that brilliant play so we get this one from a bad touch isaac is there finds a great ball through saint maximum saint maximum using that dribbling more gets past his players we know he's capable of that same with almiron i know these boys are very good at getting the ball and running with it so it's great to see that Almiron putting that pressure on the defender there. Does all the work himself and he rewards himself with a goal. And it's just great play. That high up a press is absolutely brilliant for this team. And it's just working wonders for us. And I tell you what, I might have to see the rest of the season out on my own on an offline save here. Because that is one hell of a start. Only losing to Spurs, which is fair play. Spurs are a good side here. But beating Manchester United, beating Man City as well. This tactic seems to be working, and it's all thanks to Eddie Howe giving us the inspiration of it. Honestly, this is pretty much how Eddie Howe would play his game and how he plays his football. If you look at the last five games, he's been rocking a 4-3-3. As you can see, our main distribution is going to Dan Bun, and then we play it kind of to our wingbacks and let the other guys do the stuff there. I said the wingbacks are heavily involved in this tactic, and they certainly are as well. As you can see from the passing movement, we very frequently get to it Bun and then pass it to our wingbacks. We try and get the wingbacks involved, and then get it to these wingers look how like like i say you can see isaac there and then you can see st maximum and almiron look how wide they are they're not playing as strikers they're playing as like left wingers right wingers you can't put them as strikers they need to be closer if they're going to be playing as strikers so for me it's just pushing them up a little bit further and getting involved as wingers you can see as we play check this one out with manchester united as well they've just got a little bit further here you can see how wide st maxman is playing there then you've got Kieran Trippier and Almiron linking up together there. We could have probably changed something here as it looks like Trippier was playing a little bit too aggressive there. And that's how we could have conceded our goals. But we definitely gained a link up here between Bun and Matthew Target. And that is massive to see as well. And St. Maximum getting involved. Let's have, a, let's have a look at the Spurs one. The one that we actually lost. Once again, we kind of go through Dan Bun and then we played around the back to try and get the ball forward there. But... There's plenty of options. Goalkeeper is distributing as well to the wingbacks, which is nice to see. And it's just all around working really well. We could potentially push up a little bit higher, but I think this is really, really well and working well for us here. And that is just pretty much how the tactic has got to run and how it's been running. So, guys, I know this is one of my first videos. Is there anything that you would like to know a bit more on or should I go into detail? Please let me know. This is one of my first tactic videos. I want you guys to tell me what you want to see more of, as in what stats do you want to see and what other things do you want to see as well because I'm a little bit new to this. But I'm just going to let you know, guys, that we are the top with 16 goals scored in this one. So just so you know there, we are not too bad. I'm going to end on that. But guys, thank you very much for joining me on this episode. Please leave a like, hit the subscribe if you like this kind of video. If you want to see more of it, it's help me out massively. If you want to see me building these tactics and doing stuff like this live, I'm live over at Twitch. That we do at twitch.tv forward slash tick147. I don't know what that is. Let's get that off my screen before someone does something dodgy. <laughs> but I'm live. And you see stuff like that just spontaneously pop up like it does on stream. But yeah, guys, we're live at over at twitch pretty much every single day from around one o'clock to two o'clock and we go for a good few hours so i'd love to see you over there as well but guys thank you very much for clicking on this video make sure you like make sure you subscribe and i'll catch you all next time much love and bye bye